My mother is an engineer, my father is an accountant, and I'm an MBA, but I always struggled in math. I am a dyslexic person, and uh, I did a video on my vlog channel about being a dyslexic English teacher and what does that mean. I'll put the link below so you can watch that. I think it's very interesting. It wasn't until the later years of high school that I was introduced to some teachers, some specialized teachers who knew how to teach dyslexic children, and then I flourished, especially in math. And in university, even though math was still difficult for me, I had great support systems through my parents to, to help me out with it. Um, but that was 20 years ago. <laughs> I don't remember everything. Um, but I've been a teacher in China for many years now. But it's a common stereotype that Chinese students are better than American students, especially in math. But why? Hello, everybody. Welcome to Rojo Reads the News. I'm your host, Paul. Today's article comes from Business Insider and has been aggregated by China Wire. And I think it's a very interesting read. Why Chinese children are better at math than Americans. For the most part, American children aren't great at math, but Chinese children tend to be excellent. You know, I have a, uh, a lifelong friend who is a math teacher at a high school in Southern California, and she will agree that American students are not very good at math. Testing half a million students worldwide, the Program for International Student Assessment is one of the most widely cited measurements of global education, and it's consistently found Chinese students at the top of the academic pile, and American students much nearer the bottom. Some experts argue that the PISA assessment, like any standardized tests, primarily measure a student's ability to take the test, not their knowledge. But hardly anyone disputes that the American education system has some work to do when it comes to math. I couldn't agree more. In Lenora Chu's book, Little Soldiers, an American Boy, a Chinese School, and the Global Race to Achieve, she begins to unearth the cultural differences that lead to this gap, and it's not just about what happens at school. Chu, a Chinese-American journalist raised by Chinese parents in Texas, moved to Shanghai with her American husband and toddler son in 2009. To immerse their son in the culture, she and her husband chose to enroll him in a Chinese public school system starting in preschool. The differences she noticed in her child's focus and discipline are dramatic, but she also notices cultural differences that influence how Chinese schools are run and the reason its students test so well, along with factors such as highly trained teachers and an emphasis on rote memorization. Before pursuing deeper understanding, the difference comes down to the belief that has begun slowly making its way across the U.S. Academic achievement is the result of hard work, not innate ability. You know, I agree with this a lot. When I first started teaching in China, I was using more of an American approach style. And I was frustrated because I wasn't getting the results that I would get in an American classroom. And the reason is, is because that's not the way the Chinese academic culture is. It is more focused on rote memorization, more choral drilling. And as soon as I realized that and started applying those techniques in my classroom, I got better results and it made my life and the student's life much easier. One way is not better or worse, they're just different depending on the students and the culture that they come from. And that's what this is addressing here. Chu explains this approach comes from an intrinsic belief that anything is possible with hard work, with chiku or bitter or eating bitter. If there's, a, if there's a goal worth accomplishing, day-to-day -day life might be absolutely and miserably unpleasant for a spell, she writes. But she continues. It's a concept that parents tell their children, teachers ingrain in their students, and China's leaders use to motivate their populace towards the goal of modernizing China. The concept reverberates in the classroom. Studies show that kids who score poorly, Chinese teachers believe is a lack of effort rather than of smarts, is to blame. There is little difference in the intelligence of my students, teacher Mao, Chinese language teacher at a, at a Shanghai high school, told me. His voice unwavering in his conviction, hard work is the most important thing. This is so true and something that I have learned firsthand in my years in China. And it's not just in the classroom. It's this... This group think, this group idea that permeates society here of eating bitter. It's the idea that you you suffer now, but you gain later. And if something is hard to do, the rewards will be greater in the future. And this is everywhere. It's in business, it's in life, and it's in the schools. It reminds me a lot of, um, you know, the 
the military embrace the suck concept. We can train you to do anything. You just have to put in the work. And I see it. It's very, very obvious here. Chu cites the research of Stanford psychologist Carol Dweck, author of Mindset, who is responsible for coining the terms growth mindset and fixed mindset. Chinese students are trained to have a growth mindset. If they aren't doing well, they'll work harder and they'll be successful. American children tend to be trained to have a fixed mindset about academics. Their abilities are largely predetermined and static. If they aren't doing well, it's because they're not good at it. Oh well. Yes, when I was a, a student, a dyslexic student, I thought I was just not good at this stuff. Oh well, and I didn't put any effort into it. It wasn't until later in high school that I had some great teachers who taught me that that wasn't the case. And of course, my sergeants in the military taught me that too. <laughs> UCLA psychology professor James Stingler said the American approach is problematic. Chu writes, in America, we try to sell this idea that learning is fun and easy, but real learning is actually very difficult, said Stingler. It takes suffering and angst. And if you're not willing to go through that, you're not going to learn deeply. The downside is these students often give up when something gets hard or when it's no longer fun. Stingler told Chu that because Chinese children are socialized to put up with suffering and discomfort and all the things that are a really important part of learning, a Chinese teacher presenting students with a difficult problem can encourage them to work through it, and they will. That is very evident. I mean, look at my apartment here in the, on the college. It's very comfortable. In fact, I think it's the nicest apartment on the college. I won't lie. But across the street, I can look directly into the dormitories of the students and there are four students per dorm and they're very old they look very uncomfortable it's not necessarily the cleanest environment and i know that many of these students don't come from environments similar to that they come from very luxurious environments but they put up with it much like a much like a new troop the sacrifices and the suffering that they make are an intricate part of the learning process However, there is one place Americans display the growth mindset in spades, and that is sports. That is another thing I'll focus on here for a second, is that sports and competition in general is a gigantic part of American society and one that you don't really see until you take a step back and look at it from a distance because the rest of the world does not look at sports in the same way that Americans do. It is just a huge part of our culture. It's all about getting better, getting better, working harder, Stingler told Chu. In sports, we're okay with competition and struggle. Plus, Chu writes, Americans are okay with being ranked on the football field or soccer pitch. Stingler told her that coming in ninth in an athletic competition doesn't cause a crisis of conscience for Americans. It just means they need to train harder, better, and differently. But in academics, he said, you don't want to embarrass somebody by ranking them number 30 because it's not their fault. In American academics, you either have it or you don't. A growth mindset isn't all that foreign to American children. It's just, it just isn't applied in school. I love that. I think that is a great message. We already know how to take these measures and apply them into the classroom. We're doing it in sports. Let's see if we can do it in other things such as math. Let me know what you think. Comment below. Let me know.